Good day. Welcome to Yashua Radio. It's your host, Alhanam. Today, I think it's the fifth part of the series, Studying the Word in the End Time. Now, before we study the Word, I believe it's important to know what is the Word? What is the Bible? Is the Bible the Word of Elohim? And what does that mean? Or is it just another book? What's the reason and the purpose for studying the Word of God or the Bible? Our Father, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Yahshua Messiah, that you will guide us in all truth, that will give us a spirit of discernment so that we can understand your Word, that you will write your Word on the tables of our heart. We thank you for that, Father. You're welcome in our midst. And thank you for your word, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Is there a difference between the word of God and God's words? Is there a difference between the word that a father speaks directly to his children and the words that a father convey through someone else to his children? If the father told his children to take the green chair and place it in the white room with the blue curtains, and if the father asked his wife to tell the children to take the green chair and place it in the white room with the blue curtains, are there any difference? Will the children obey? Of course. It is as if the father himself gave the instruction. He gave it to his wife with the same authority. What is the meaning of the word Bible? The word Bible literally means paper or scroll. Later it was called a book. The word Bible comes from the Latin word Biblia. In 386 after Messiah, biblical writings was for the first time referred to as books. The Hebrew word for that is scroll or scrolls. These books consist of all the writings that they decide is spirit fault inspired by God, and that was also called in that time canon. That consists of the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. It is also called in Hebrew the Tanakh. The Tanakh consists of the Torah, the Nevi'im, and the New Testament or the Renewed Testament or the Renewed Covenant. It's also called Christian writings, and that was added to the Old Testament, also the Jewish Bible. Of course, they have different books, etc. There are different ways of understanding or interpreting the Bible. Here's just a couple of ways that the people used to try and understand Scripture. Hermetics, the theory and the mythology of interpretation, wisdom, literature, and philosophical texts. It's called aromatics. A fazer is a combination of interpretations. Madras, a lot of people talk about the word or specific scripture or chapter or a scroll, and you have different views. And Madras. Then there's levels of revelations. Four levels, and that's also why the gospel is written four times. It's one gospel, but with four different interpretation levels. A Pasat, Remesh, Dras, and a Sot level. Allegorical uses stories and pictures to obtain a second level of interpretation. Then the literal mean. 
interpretation based on the exact wording. If the words say a sea, it does not mean a multitude of people or nations. It means water, sea. What's written is the meaning of or the intent of that meaning. In the second century AD, some Jewish believers start to call scrolls, also scriptures, holy scriptures, or also kitabe. Christians call it today the Holy Bible. Holy means to be set apart, to be set apart for a specific purpose. It was only in the 13th century that scrolls were divided into chapters and verses by Stephen Langton. Before that, it was one book of Isaiah, one book of Amos, one book of Moses, etc. The Codex Vaticanus is most probably the oldest translation, and that's kept apparently in the Vatican. The oldest Tanakh, written in Aramaic and Hebrew, that we know of were written in 10 AD. The Torah is given to God, sorry, by God to Moses. It went through human hands and some translations. Therefore, it is not directly from God, but still from God with the same authority. In the prophets, God spoke and they wrote what God said. It is still the word of God and until today, these prophecies are being performed. If we look at the Psalms and other writings, it is mostly written by men but led by the Spirit of God. In the New Testament, we find the Old Testament being fulfilled. We see oral traditions and teachings confirmed, which were only written in the latter part of the first century. The book of Revelation is prophecy for the last days, and a confirmation of what other prophets wrote. It is clear that the whole Bible was not written verbatim. We believe that it is the inspired word of God. There are certain parts that were written as God instructed, in other words, a verbatim. If you study scripture, you will find that all the writings support and confirm the same message from the beginning to the end and there are no contradictions even the new testament does not contradict the old testament if people teach that it means they do not understand scripture and the scripture is not open to them it is teachings of men for the Ruach HaMes, the spirit of truth, will teach us in all truth. And that is a sign of divine intervention. With the translation of the Bible in Latin, a division of the then Western and Eastern Church started. Some people wanted the Bible only to be kept in Aramaic or Hebrew. And then it was translated into Latin and the Greek, etc. And then there was a division in the church. Different groups decided to add and to allow some writings and deny others. The Ethiopian Orthodox Bible, for instance, consists of 81 books, where ours today have 66. The Torah, what does that mean? The Hebrew name for the five books of Moses. It is instruct, it means instruction or to teach. And that is Genesis, which is Shamot, Leviticus, which is Vayagra, but Mid Deuteronomy. The Ten Commandments, also called the Covenant of God, is the basis of the scriptural law. The Jewish rabbis divide these laws, these instructions, these commandments, all of them statutes, 
in 613 laws, also called, and it sounds like a lot, but if you study the New Testament in detail, there's 1,053 instructions or laws, but not contradicting the Old Testament, not adding, just instruct in another way, but the same law, same instructions. And your city, your county, your country where you live in, have definitely more laws than 613. What is the importance of the Old Testament for Christian theology? The Old Testament was already the center point of the early church. Let's ask for why. The modern church tried to hide the Old Testament, to only use it as a reference. But that was not so during the time of Paul and the other apostles. In his letter to Timothy, the second letter, chapter 3, verse 16, he say, All scripture is breathed by Elohim and profitable for teaching, to reprove, for setting straight, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, then the man of Elohim might be fitted, equipped for every good work. So he said the Old Testament, because there was no New Testament during that time. This letter is part of one of the books of the New Testament. So he said the Old Testament is there to profit the people when you teach them. It's there to reprove, for setting straight, for instructions in righteousness, to help us and equip us for good works. Do you think that Paul referred to the New Testament? Definitely not. From scriptures, it is clear that the Old Testament played an import, important part in Jesus' life. That is why the apostles study it as well as use it as a way of living. Let's look at the New Testament. The New Testament is the name given to the second part of the Bible as we know it today. Jesus in person is the center figure of these writings. During the second century after Messiah, these writings were placed in a book. Not all believers were eager to combine these writings with the Tanakh, with the Old Testament. It was during this time that the letter of the apostles were copied and sent to believers. The New Testament consists of the Gospel of Yahshua, one Gospel, four books, four revelations. Four letters of the apostle and the prophetic book, Revelation, also the Apocalypse. Is all scripture in the Bible the words of God? No, it's not. If we look at the scripture in the Renewed Testament, it is only the gospel and revelation where it is written that God said, not in the letters of Paul or John, Kepha, Peter, it's only in those books, the gospel and revelation. We believe that all scripture is spirit inspired or at least written by spirit for believers. And here's one example. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 12. And to the rest I say, not the master. Paul is writing to say, to the rest I, Paul, say, not Jesus, not the master, not Yahshua, not God. If any brother has an unbelieving wife and she thinks well to live with him, let him not send her away. So he say, I am saying that, not God. Is everything written in the Bible the truth? No. But everything that is written happened as it is written. Let me give you an example. Exodus 
20 verse 19. People said to Moses, You speak to us and we hear, but let not Elohim speak to us, lest we die. Why do you want to hear the voice of God if you're going to die? You will not die when God speaks to you. They said they don't want to hear the voice of God because they believe that they would have died. That is not true. It's true that they believe that. That's why it's written. But it's not true that you will die when God speaks to you. In the Bible, it is clear that they are a designer with a specific message. And even if people want to change the word, the truth will always revive. In the first book of the Bible, we see the need for a savior. And we read that he will come. There are approximately 66, 66 books in the Bible written by 50 different authors. It is written over a period of 2,000 years. And there are no contradictions. This is proof of a divine author, God himself. If we look at this picture, and it doesn't matter what your culture is, doesn't matter in which part of the world you live, a child of six, seven years, if you ask him to draw a picture of his house and his mommy and daddy, this is normally the picture that all six, seven year old draw. And if you look at this in a Hebrew viewpoint, all 20 letters of the Aleph Bet, alphabet in other words, the Aleph Bet in Hebrew is combined in this picture. So if you take this picture, you can speak each and every word of the Bible. Let's look at a couple of verses in the Hebrew viewpoint. If we look at Barashit Bara et and you look at the whole where God created the heavens and the earth. We see seven is very important. And it tells its own story. That's a deeper part of a revelation of scripture. There are seven words in the first verse. The sum of the letters in the first verse is 28. Seven times four. When we look at the Hebrew word for in the beginning, Barashit, it consists of 14 letters, seven times two. The last four Hebrew words for the heaven is 14 letters, seven times two, it's 14. The fourth and the fifth word has seven letters. The sixth and the seventh word has seven letters. The key words, God, heavens, and earth has once again, 14 letters, seven times two. The sum of the fourth remaining words is also 14. The shortest word in the middle of the sentence, it's exactly in the middle. Three on the left, three on the right. The numerical value of the first, middle, and the last word is 133. 7 times 19. The numerical value of all seven words is 1,193, seven times. So you see it's designed in a specific way for a specific reason. What about seven in the first book of the New Testament? It's the same in the New Testament. For God wanted that way. In Matthew 1, Verses 18 to 25, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah. The numerical value of the seven words is 161, seven times 20. The number of the words used in that part is 77, seven times 11. There are six Greek words used in this part of the gospel and nowhere else in the Bible. Where these words consist of 56 letters, seven times eight. There are seven names used in this part. 
The sum of the seven names in Greek is 42. Seven times six. The angels speak 28 words with Joseph. In the fir uh, first verses of the Hebrew Bible, God wrote the words in such a way that with a mathematical calculation, you would be able to see if it was tempered with or not. Let's just look at these letters. And you see every 49th letter is the same letter. The resh, every 49. Same with Exodus. You start and you count till you find the first letter. Every 49th letter, same. Every 49th letter is the same. The same in numbers. So it's clear, and in Deuteronomy, it's clear that God designed it that way. Let's look at Genesis 5, verse 4 to 31. And after he brought forth Seth, the days of Adam were 800 years, and he brought forth sons and daughters. This first son is Enoch, Uyan, Mehalalel, Jared, Hanok, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Enos. Let's look now at the meaning of those names and what message is conveyed in their names. Adam, a man, Seth appointed, Enoch, mortal, Oyan, sorrow, Malalel, blessed God, Jared, shall come down, Hanok, teaching, Methuselah, his death shall bring, Lamech, disappearing, and Noah, comfort of rest. So the message in their names, a man appointed mortal sorrow, but Blessed God shall come down teaching. His death shall bring the despair, comfort, and rest. So in the names of Adam and his sons is the message of the Messiah that will come to bring comfort and rest. Also, only God can put it there. The coming of the Messiah and what he would do on earth was prophesied even through the names and the meaning of those names. There are more than 365 prophecies about Yeshua, Jesus, of which most of them were already fulfilled. What do you think are the odds of even three of these prophecies being fulfilled by one person? It is one in a hundred billion. And more than 300 prophecies has already been fulfilled. John 1 verse 1. Sometimes it's just important to read the Hebrew as well. For the word was given to the Hebrews in their language. Through translation, we lost a lot of meanings and teachings. And it's not our fault. We praise God that he sent the spirit of truth that will guide us in all truth. He will teach us what Yahshua Jesus said and what is written in the Bible. So we don't need men and doctrines of men. We need the spirit of God to open the word to us. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. What is the beginning? The beginning is Barashit. In the beginning, God created. In Barashit, Genesis, God created. So even in John say, even in Genesis was the word, and that word was with Elohim, and that word himself is Elohim. What is that word? Little letter in the sentence, the first sentence. Aleph, Tav. In Greek, Alpha, Omega. God himself. In the beginning is Genesis. The word is that Aleph, Tav. In the middle of that sentence. So John say, in the beginning, in Barashit, 
was that word. And that word was with Elohim. And that word himself is Elohim. Awesome. Revelations 1.8. I am the Aleph and the Taf. We read in Greek, I am the Alpha and the Omega. That's the first and the last letters of the Greek alpha. Taf is the first and the last letters of the Hebrew Aleph B. Yahshua say, I'm the first and the last. John say that word, that's the first and the last, was in the beginning with God, and that word itself is God. That's Yahshua. Let's look at this verse, Zechariah 12, 10. I will fall upon the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace, and of supplication, and they shall look upon the Aleph Taf, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn. So if we look at that, they will look upon the Aleph Taf, they will look upon that word that was with Elohim, and that word himself is Elohim, Jesus, Yahshua. Ain't it awesome? Matthew 5, 18. For truly, I say to you, till the heaven and the earth passes away, not one yacht or one title shall by no means pass from the Torah, from the Old Testament, from the five books of Moses, till all is done. Now, our Bibles don't have yotas and titles. That is where there is only one or two dots on top of a letter, a Hebrew letter, or that's, for instance, when the Aleph is very big or the Dalet is big or small, it's Yotas and Tittles. And each of one of them have a specific teaching connected to that. Let me give you a quick example where Esau came to greet his brother Jacob and he kissed him. That on top of that kiss is three dots. Three yachts made. And teaching there is he didn't kiss him because he loved his brother. He kissed him because he wanted to devour him, he wanted to bite him. Interesting. Now, Jesus say, not even those dots and tittle will pass away. The whole scripture of God will remain the same. So do you believe that was written in the Bible is true? Of course it is true. It's the word of God translated through the years. But therefore we have the spirit of God that will guide us in all truth. And all we need to do is to ask God that his spirit will reveal to us his word so that we can understand it. The way God wants us to understand. That is why it's so important to study the Word of God, the Bible, Scripture, ourselves in the last days. These days we are in now. Not to listen to men and the teachings of men, because the Word of God says the teachings of men will lead us astray. It also says that there will be teachings and doctrines of devils. Therefore, we need the spirit of truth that will reveal to us the word of God, which is true. Thank you, Father, for your spirit that you sent, that lives inside us, that will reveal your word, your truth to us. We love you, Lord. Help us to understand your word. In Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.